What's up everybody? Thank you so much for joining me. My name is Spencer Harris and this week I've got a very quick and fun tutorial for you. I'm going to be showing you how to clone yourself within a moving frame, much like you saw in my last video, which you can see here. And uh, yeah, let's just go ahead and jump in. Now there are a few things that you are going to need and keep in mind when pulling this effect off. Number one, obviously get a camera. That's it. That's the genius tip you got for everybody. Get a camera? What do you, don't you think that they might have well, hey, a camera? You, you have a camera, right? Yeah, hey, dumbass, if they're watching this tutorial, they probably have a camera. Get a camera. Go I've heard it all camera. before, man. What, what, what other stroke I've of genius you, do you have? What's tip number two? Trying to, huh? Get an SD card? Yeah, no, I, I don't know. I'm just shooting from the hip here, pal. Get a camera. Yeah, man. Sound advice. Can I just sound advice? You should do this more often. You know, I don't. No wonder. I just don't even have any words anymore. I'm so disappointed in you. So disappointed. Are you done? Are you done? Are you done? Oh yeah. That's all I got. Thank you. Carry on. Thank you. I'm out of here. The audience thanks you too. Two, you're gonna need some sort of motorized gimbal or motorized slider to pull this effect off. And three, you're gonna need some editing software. Four, when you are shooting this, you are going to wanna be on full manual mode. Um, you're not gonna to wanna to have any fluctuation in your exposure, any fluctuation in your focus. Everything is gonna to have to be staying the same every single time you shoot it. Now, once you've shot your sequence and you've loaded all of your footage into Final Cut, the next steps are gonna be pretty easy, just a little time consuming, but with any good effect, it's gonna take some time, so just have some patience, know that it's gonna take some time, grab some coffee, throw on some music, and let's get started. Now I've already got Final Cut open, and I just wanna show you how I have my timeline set up for my project set up. Uh, right here are gonna be the four clips. I cloned myself four times, so we're gonna be working with four different clips. And uh, this is the, the beginning sequence of the last video in which all four clips have been tied together. You can see this here. Okay, so what you're gonna wanna do is go ahead and isolate all four frames, um, all four moving frames you can see here. Let's just go ahead and do that. So this one, I basically started the, the clip when the gimbal started moving. So you can see here, it's moving. I'm not on the couch, I'm not on the chair, and I'm not here at my desk. Um, this reminds me to tell you that uh, this is going to take a lot of rendering, so you're going to want to go ahead and turn uh, automatic rendering off. You can do that by going up to preferences, go up to playback, and uncheck background render. That's just going to help you in this whole process. Um, also, if you're working with 4K footage, go ahead and do better performance instead of better quality playback. Um, and then I stacked all of mine in the order in which they appear, so on the top we have the last shot. Um, second from the top, we have uh, the armchair piece, and then uh, third from the top is going to be the couch, and then the very bottom one is going to be the clip that I started off with. So let's just go ahead and um, start, let's turn these two off, that way I'm just working with this. Okay. So the first step is going to be to turn your opacity down about... 75%. So you can see I'm, I'm a little ghosted there, and I'm a little ghosted there. Let's just make that about 50%. Okay. Since we have the clips in, we don't really need that sidebar. So you can see that the clips aren't exactly lined up, but they are pretty good. Now you're going to want to find a point in which you're going to want to mask both of these uh, camera positions. I like the blinds here. There's some good lines here that can go ahead and just, you know, no one's really going to notice if I do it the right way, so I'm going to go ahead and draw my mask down uh, the lines, these vertical lines of the blinds. So that should work. It should blend in pretty well. Um, and since that is going to be my line, I just want to make sure that everything else is lining up pretty good. Now, I'm not going to really worry about anything to the right or to the left because these are all going to be their own clips. So I just want to make sure that these blinds are matched up pretty good and it looks like they are. So I'm just going to go ahead and uh, go into our effects panel 
and to our masks. And I'm gonna draw a mask. So let's just go ahead and jump on that. And you're gonna want to also take it down to about 25%. So let's just do this. Move these control points if you didn't get it exactly right. There we go, that looks good to me. So then go back to where it's off frame or back as far as you can. Yeah, so. We're gonna move this back. to keyframe the control points and the positions of those control points. So keyframe it right there and keyframe our positions. Now I'm just going to shift over five frames. One, two, three, four, five. Bring it in. Line it up again. And then from here, I'm just gonna keyframe the entire thing by five frames or so. So one, two, three, four, five. Moving it over. One, two, three, four, five. Moving it over. One, two, three, four, five. You might have to do some small tweaks, small adjustments. I was on a wide lens, so there is a little bit of uh, distortion there, so you might just have to tweak your, uh, your mask lines a little bit from time to time. One, two, three, four, five. And I'm just gonna speed this up for the sake of time. Okay, first one's done. Now I would go back around to about the middle part and with your mask, let's just feather it just a little bit. Now you're not gonna really gonna be able to see that much, but I would feather it about, let's say 60% and uh, have your fall off maybe about 40. And then that should be pretty seamless. And make sure that you go ahead and turn the opacity all the way back up. And there you have it. So first layer is done. And you can't even see that seam. Pretty awesome. So now you want to go ahead and figure out where your second point is going to be on your third position. So let's go ahead and turn that one on. Let's uh, turn our opacity back down to 50%. Close to it. And you can see that I am ghosting about right here. And I want to find a nice, strong line for this mask. So I like uh, coming down from the lamp over to the edge of the couch and then down the side of the couch right here where you can see the shadow um, is coming through or it's the shadows cut off right here on the the arm so we're going to just repeat that same step we're going to throw a mask a draw mask on and we are going to go ahead and draw our shape this 
this up a little bit. Okay, we can get started. So we're gonna go back to where that is off frame. Coming back, comes in about right here. So let's get this out of here. And bring it in. Oh, we need to, we need to keyframe that. Control point, keyframe transfer or er, uh, transforms in positions, and one, two, three, four, five. Still not in. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, now we're here. I'm just gonna bring this in and adjust it accordingly. That still looks good. One, two, three, four, five frames. And that looks good to me. So again, we're going to turn up the opacity on our third layer. And you can see that now the first layer, the second layer, and the third layer are all there. And let's feather mask again around 50% and let's do the fall off about 40. Great. And now for the very last layer, we're going to go ahead and, and add another draw mask and find a line. On this one, I did the line right here where the wall ends. It just looked like the most natural place to do the line. So um, this one should be pretty easy. Nothing else to really worry about in the frame or to draw around. And we're just gonna come back here. Turn this on. Turn the opacity down. 50%. You can see me back there at the desk. And then this wall comes in is where I want to just right there. So keyframe it off screen, and then when that wall comes in, that's when we'll start. Drop down your transforms, drop down your control points, keyframe, keyframe, and start going. And there we go, we're just going to feather again at, let's say 50 and fall off at 40. Looks pretty clean to me. And then we go ahead and bring up the opacity to 100%. Now you can see me there and my shoulder here. And there you have it. That is how you clone yourself within a moving frame. Very, very easy, just a little time consuming, but with all special effects, the more time you put into it and the more detail oriented you are, the better the effect turns out. So I um, hope you guys learned something on this one. I will see you on the next episode and, uh, and yeah, see you then.